All right, welcome back. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to add a thing called Jinja. Uh, let's go explain what the motivation is, and then we'll tell you more about what Jinja is. So right now, if you were to open up your, your main.py, you can see that we're writing a response that's, that's just plain text. And to be honest, we're kind of lucky that Chrome is smart enough to just render text, because really you should be sending it HTML. So what we could do is we could, you know, if we're good HTML programmers, you know, we could just start putting things in line here um, with HTML, except for it quickly gets ridiculous, right? Um, these things get very long. You can't really see it. Um, and it's really just not the right way to do it. Uh, so I'm just going to say blah. Um, so that's not the approach we're going to take. Uh, what we really want to do is we want a cleaner way to kind of like edit HTML in an HTML file and then just kind of like selectively insert uh, data. And so that's what Jinja is kind of all about. So let's go ahead and start using Jinja. So open up your app.yaml file. And the first thing we need to do if we're going to use Jinja is we need to list in the libraries that we're going to use Jinja. Technically, it's called Jinja 2. Uh, for production apps, oops, I suppose I type, should type it correctly. For production apps, they recommend that you list a specific version you're using. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about compatibility as versions change. But for a little test like this, I'm just going to say latest. It's easier. Um, so I'm going to be using Jinja 2. And you can see that was done in the, uh, the slides as well. So Jinja 2 latest. And then the next step is a little bit... Um, it's a little bit verbose in typing. Go ahead and copy this uh, this from the slides uh, into your uh, clipboard so that you can you can paste this in. What you need to do is, in order to use Jinja, you need to create an instance of the Jinja environment. And I know that's a mouthful. Um, so, in order to create an instance, like create an actual object um, of the Jinja environment, uh, it looks like this. So you say, "Hey, Jinja two." Uh, call a constructor called environment, so you're creating an environment object. Pass in these parameters. So it needs a loader, um, which is just some magic. I, I, I really don't even care what that line says. It's some magic that they told me to put. And then they recommend that you also say whether you want to auto-escape things that you put in. This is a little detailed, uh, but it's like if somebody puts in a movie quote that says like, you know, script, or they try to like sneakily sneak in JavaScript, um, auto escape true will, will prevent them from actually like damaging your site. We might play some games with it later. You can do some funny things if you were to leave this as false. You can put in movie quotes to like make the page hide and things like that. You can see I'm missing some imports. I'm missing a Jinja 2 import. I'm missing an OS import. Uh, I'm going to try Control Shift O, uh, see if it picks them up. So Jinja 2, great, found that one. And then OS, great, found that one. So it just kind of added those two imports for me. Again, if your Eclipse environment isn't isn't doing Control Shift O properly, feel free to just type them. Boilerplate code wasn't hard, easy to add. Now we've got to use it, right? So in order to use it, uh, what we need to do is we need to get a template file. Um, this template file doesn't exist yet, and I forget the syntax, so we're going to have to go look at the notes. Uh, the notes say Jinja environment dot get template. Uh, that seems easy enough. We still haven't made it yet. So Jinja environment, that was my variable name that's just above. Uh, it has a function on it called get template. Great. Uh, and there's uh, a bunch of things that can go in here, but the only thing you really have to say is where is the file. So we're going to make a folder called templates, uh, and it's going to have in it a file called, let's just call it moviequotes.html. So it's going to go get that template, and then what we're going to do is instead of rendering a string, you know, which is ridiculous, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to say template.render, and then you can pass in data. Uh, that you're going to use to render. Uh, but right now we're not going to pass in any data, so we're just going to pass in blank. Looks like I'm missing a parenthesis there. All right, make uh, Eclipse way happier. All right, so we say, hey, use this file, but that file doesn't exist. Let's go make a file, right? So we say that it's going to be in a folder called templates. So I'm going to right-click on my project. I'm going to say new 
I'm going to say folder. I know that popped off your screen, but trust me, I'm clicking on the word folder. Templates. And then inside templates, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say new file. And this new file I'm going to make is moviequotes.html. So I don't know what your level of comfort is with HTML, so we'll just kind of start from the uh, from the beginning. So HTML files are always going to have um, a tag that says HTML. They're typically going to have a head area, and they're typically going to have a body area. So that's kind of the basic structure of an HTML file. Uh, there's some other things that you really should say. Uh, so you should say what the doc type is. So that's just recommended. So there's a lot of history of HTML, and that says, hey, don't use any of this. I don't want to say stupid, but I do want to say stupid. Don't use any of this quirky mode history nonsense. Just use the, the new stuff. Uh, likewise, as far as just saying, hey, what type of file is it? Uh, there's a meta tag that says, I, I think it's char set, and this is a UTF-8 uh, encoded file. And so that's just kind of some boilerplate stuff. The things that are on my clipboard right now will just be part of any uh, HTML page. And then most HTML pages also list a title. The title gets printed up in the tab. Um, and I'm just going to make my title say movie quotes. Uh, that seems fine. And then we don't really care what the body says right now. We just want to see if templates work, right? Uh, so I'm just going to say, David Fisher can use templates, or can use Jinja. Jinja 2, more specifically. Um, so my goal is simple. I just want this web page to show up. Um, you can see that it was way better editing in HTML. You can also format if you just select it all, which was Control A, uh, and then you do a Control Shift F for auto format. Turns out there wasn't much formatting needed. I just needed to kick the H1 over. So let's see if it works. So if we want to see it working, I mean, obviously we could deploy it, but that would be a giant waste of our time. Instead, what I want to do is I just want to run it locally. Um, since I've run it recently, what I can do is you can always right click on it and you can say run as, you know, PyDev Google App Engine run. But if you've already run it once, what I typically like to do is I select the project just to kind of make sure I don't have anything crazy selected. And then in the drop down, I can see that Movie Quotes Web App uh, is, is something I've run recently. So it's kicking off localhost. And if uh, we open up Chrome and we go to localhost 8080, uh, you can see that there was nothing there before. Uh, but if I run it now, uh, I want to see the words, Dave Fisher can use Jinja 2. Um, if it worked, it'll show up. If it doesn't work, uh, what you should go look at is you should go look in here for, for logs, right? Is, is something wrong? Uh, it looks like mine just probably wasn't ready. I was a little too fast, apparently. Um, when I come back, presto, there it is. So this is all just set up. I know it seemed like a lot, um, so I'm just going to review it. Uh, what we had to do is we had to say in app.yaml that we were going to use this thing called Jinja. Uh, in Py, or main.py, we, we had to create an instance of the Jinja environment. We had to grab a template, uh, which is what we wanted. And then instead of like just typing in a string for the response, we say, hey, template, render the response. The big reason you use templates is because you can put data into the template, kind of like a formatted print string. We don't, we're not doing that yet, so it's just blank. Um, and then we also, we kind of got a crash course into HTML. If you're brand new to HTML, um, just try to keep swimming, right? We're going to just learn a little bit as we go if you're new to HTML. Uh, so that's it for, uh, for the setting up of Jinja. Uh, what we want to do next time is we want to start doing more stuff with Jinja, but that's enough for now. See you next time. Bye.